Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Ruby, Volume 4, Episode 6, and World of Remnant, The Schnee Dust Company. Okay, skip right to that in real quick. That's one way to end the episode. <laughs> that that was awesome. <laughs> Though I'm like, they're holding this end scene just a little too long. <laughs> just a tad, because Mr. Scorpion Faunus would not continue to hold still, and Crow, you don't want to keep having your back to the guy. Mm -hmm. Also, it seems like it's not his tail you really have to worry about, because every time he deliberately connected with Ruby, red energy kind of pulsed out. I'm thinking that's kind of his venom, not coming from his tail. That also may be something that he got from Miss Creepy Lady. Mm -hmm. But now let's go back to the beginning of the episode. <laughs> A little bit more in order. It's just I, I had to do that, that scene right there. I was like, whoa, that was a cool scene. Hi, Crow! <laughs> so yeah, this is a good episode to come back to after, like, wow. <laughs> yes. And we get a little bit more history about Ren. Mm hmm So now I want to know is when did Ren and Nora get together? <laughs> As in be around each other because it is officially canon that they're not in a relationship of that kind. But apparently Nora doesn't know everything about Ren because she didn't know this. So he's apparently from a group of people who broke off from their settlement because they didn't like how things were run, tried to create their own settlement, but then yeah, the a settlement got overrun by Grimm. <laughs> Yes, and apparently he's from a rather well-to-do family because all of those fam the people who came there were pooling money and resources. Kind of have to have money and resources to be able to do that. So that could be one explanation for his very stoic and regal attitude. Yeah, he always seemed, I would have to say it high class, but not um, high class like the rest of the Schnee family, but the kind of, or the people at that party. He seemed like that kind of royalty you want to meet. Basically kind of like how I always picture royalty. <laughs> the nice royalty anyways. <laughs> and contrast that with uh, what the Schnee family has become. Thank you World of Remnant for cluing us into the fact that Wise's father married into the Schnee family. And basically took it from a nice, you know, we're all about quality and we're going to do things right to we're all about profit and we're high society. Dude, you married into a family, the guy who was the son of a dust miner. Quite literally a self-made man. Quite. And he seems to treat everyone like property. It makes me wonder how he treated his wife. Yeesh. Or his wife, because apparently she's still alive. Just drinking herself, probably to unconsciousness at times. <laughs> yeah. I hope we get to see Weiss's mother this season. Actually see her, not just a silhouette in a World of Remnant video. Mm-hmm. Well, we technically saw her in the portrait, but you mean actually see her walking around and Weiss interacting with her and stuff like that. Yes. I also like, going on to the World Remnant real quick, I also like how in the World Remnant, they kind of point out that Wise may be the future of the company. <laughs> That's interesting because Winter's older and her brother's the male, and oftentimes the male is the designated heir regardless of the age of the females. But when Crow says, the future of the company, they show the silhouette of Wise. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely Wise, not Winter. Mm hmm. So that's kind of interesting. And it would make sense for her to take over the company because she would be a better heir than the son so far from what we've seen of him. And since her sister doesn't seem to want to be there at all or involved with the company at all. <laughs> well, Winter has a military career. She doesn't have time to run the Schnee Dust Company. Mm -hmm. But back to the episode, and since we were talking about Wise and the Schnee Company, the scenes with her in this episode were really good and... I wonder if we're going to get a full release of that song she was singing on the soundtrack when it comes out, or if there's already a YouTube video out, or if they already released the mp3 of the song. I just haven't gone looking for it. They might have, because it, it sounded great, and 
it sounded amazingly powerful. And just listening a little bit to the lyrics, I'm like, is this really the kind of music her father was thinking about? And there was kind of a long silence after she stopped singing and bowed before those idiots started clapping. And just all the falseness and hollowness and shallowness of everyone who was there. Else the animation on her didn't quite seem to match up, at least lip sync wise, with her singing. It did seem slightly off, so... And I have a feeling, going to the party now, we're going to see that guy again. <laughs> you don't put that kind of detail into an outfit unless somebody's going to be coming back. The real question is, ally or foe? Mm, maybe a little bit like Sun. Friendly antagonist. Mm -hmm. And it's a shame she lost control of her semblance, but that lady deserved that scare. <laughs> Very much so, but that's a hard blow to Weiss. Also, at the same time, oh my goodness, you know, Weiss hasn't been able to do that at all. And, you know, at the end of season three, we had her just with a arm wielding a sword. And now she managed to bring up the Borgrim that she defeated in season one. Oh, yeah. I was wondering, like, like, where did that boar come from? I completely forgot about the fact that she fought a boar in class. <laughs> yes. Well, it was a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I like how that situation got resolved. Ironwood. Good job, Ironwood. I may not fully like you as a character, but you have your moments. <laughs> I do like him as a character, and he does have his moments, but he's also extremely ridiculously stubborn and set in his way at times. And some of his actions probably worsened some of the situations in Season 3. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he was a catalyst for a lot of things, and he was being manipulated without realizing it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But to go back to the other group that Episode 6 dealt with, with Ruby, Jean, Nora, and Ren. Okay, Ren is pretty amazing that he heard that psycho coming. Mm -hmm. Also, that psycho is a lot more powerful than I expected. I mean, he stopped Nora's hammer fully charged. That's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> I know, just a tad worrisome. Was, I love the look on his face when that shot went right past him and blasted Nora. He was like, uh-oh, look at what you did. And I was like, wait a minute, why aren't any of them upset? Oh, that's why. That's interesting. Yeah, though it does make me highly anticipate the fight between him and Crow. Oh yeah, and speaking of Crow, Crow and Ruby, notice that her cape is tattered now. Looks a lot more like Crow's. Hmm, need to watch that episode again. <laughs> and the excuse to watch them again. <laughs> yes, and also to go back and analyze why Psycho Boy is kind of interested in Jean. Yeah. That particular part was interesting. Like, you don't count, you don't count, you kind of count, but her, her is the one I'm after. Yes, it's like, no, 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 I find you somewhat interesting. I'm like, that's disturbing on so many levels. Mm-hmm. Makes me worry about John if he can't get his hands on Ruby. So that might get us closer to revealing John's actual or at least an inkling of John's full power that may be hidden, because we keep getting hints that he's stronger than he appears. You know, the classic, I'm the weak character in the last moments of the important scene. Suddenly, I am the strongest character here. <laughs> yes, as we don't really know what Jean's semblance is. Kara unlocked it for him, but we don't know what his power is, and we don't know what else he can do with the upgraded weaponry. And we still don't know if Kira is still around him in some form. Mm-hmm. Lots of interesting questions. And like I said at the beginning of the episode, that ending, that ending is just like, I want to see more. Good way to end it. And I don't mind we get a World of Remnant episode right after that. <laughs> yes, but good timing on the World of Remnant episode, because half of this episode focused on the Snee family, and the World of Remnant was about the Snee Dust Company. Mm-hmm. And I really love how it was presented, especially when Crow goes, Oh, oh, there's one! <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff I could say about this. Yeah, most of it I can actually say. So he draws it all instead. <laughs> yep, I love how he actually wrote notes on it. Oh, that was great. Mm -hmm. Also that we could hear him flipping through pages. 
before the animation mm-hmm. started. And I'm actually really looking forward to new episodes of World of Remnant as, as well, because I'm like, ooh, we get to know more, and I just love the way the voice actor for Crow is playing them off in character. It's just so nice. <laughs> He's also one of those character voices you're like, I really like his voice. He could read the phone book, and it would be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> So, any nitpicks for um, the episode? (laughs) You know me, I always pick at something, but with Ruby it keeps getting harder because they do such a good job, and they have really hit their stride because, you know, we're all the way to volume four, and we're all still watching. I'm pretty sure they're doing something right. Mm Mm-hmm, because their budget keeps going up and people keep liking them, and they were imported to Japan. (laughs) It's an actual show on TV. I consider that really nice. Mm-hmm. Also, they have their own line of blind boxes now available in the store, which I'm not a big fan of the randomness of that. It's kind of a pain. It's like, can't I just buy what I want? Also, um, Series 3 figures are out. So far, we have Torchwick and Cinder. And Torchwick, Cinder... Uh, Who's the jerk with the fake legs? Oh, Mercury. Yeah, and Emerald. Hmm. Speaking of uh, those guys, that kind of reminded me of something I also noticed in the intro recently. It's kind of interesting. Cinder's right arm is disabled, and Yang's left arm is disabled. They're kind of opposites from each other, so it's kind of interesting. Like, that's kind of an interesting contrast I never really noticed before. Mm Mm-hmm. Also, going back to the intro... All that echo of, can't we just go home, can't we just go home? Everyone except Ruby has gone home. Hmm. Weiss is back at the Schnee family estate. Blake has gone back to Nazare. And Yang is out in that little cabin with her father. And it looks like we're seeing elements of Ren's old home. And we may see elements of Nora's. I'm not quite sure, because we haven't seen anything for Nora yet. And we've gotten hints of Jean. Yeah, so be interesting because since ruby's group is the one traveling that kind of gives us a lot of opportunities for different types of backstory than what we have with the characters that are currently stationary not that they cannot do backstory with a stationary position but it changes what's available and what the triggers can be for inducing giving the information Mm mm-hmm I'm sorry that I cut you off for any more nitpicks. <laughs> no, I think I'm mostly done. In that case, shall we move on to our final thoughts on the episodes? Mm-hmm. As I said in parts of this episode already. Yeah, I can't wait for the next episode because I want to see the fight between Scorpion Boy slash Crazy Boy and Crow. Because <laughs> I don't think Crow was showing his full power during that fight with Winter. No, Crow was mainly goofing off during the fight with Winter. He wasn't taking it seriously. This he is going to take very seriously because notice he's pretty much left the kids alone. He's guarded their backs some by taking out some of the lesser grim, but he didn't interfere with that big job that they had. He hasn't interfered anywhere else along the way that they've been able to see. So for Crow to come rushing in, swooping in literally, to deal with this guy means that this guy is a major level threat and I want to see Crow handle it. This has been our thoughts on Ruby, Season 4, Episode 6, and World of Remnant, The Schnee Dust Company. If you enjoyed this, please click the subscribe button. If you want to see more of Lux's art, you can find it on DeviantArt, Tumblr, and Twitter. Would you like to help support Lux? He has a Patreon and a coffee account. He also does commissions. See links below and to check for commission availability.